For several centuries, Palmyra, also known as the Bride of the Desert, was an important caravan city for travelers crossing the Syrian desert. It was recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site in 1980. The city's Greek name, Palmura, is the translation of the Aramaic Tadmor, meaning palm tree. The oasis was first mentioned in the second millennium BC in the archives of another trading city, Mari. It is also mentioned in the Hebrew Bible as a desert city built and protected by King Solomon. Palmyra became an independent city in 323 BC when the Seleucids took control of Syria. The city flourished in the first century BC as the final destination of the incense route. The Romans first tried to conquer the city unsuccessfully. Then, during the reign of Tiberius, they formed an alliance with it. After the fall of Petra in 105 AD, Palmyra seized full commercial control of the incense route. During this period of prosperity, it became the richest city in the Near East. The economic influence of Palmyra grew continually. Yet now, empty gateways look out on a sky that has watched the city crumble over centuries. It is said that the Palmyrans were the only people to live alongside Rome without being Romanized. They simply pretended to be Romans. Growth of the new Persian Empire began to reduce Palmyra's commercial importance. To compensate for this, the Roman Emperor gave the King of Palmyra the title of Dux Orientis, governor of the province of Syria, helping to banish the Persians. When the King's power started to threaten Rome, he and his son were assassinated around 267. His widow, the beautiful Zenobia, became regent and ruled Palmyra on behalf of her son, the Imperator. She also conquered the Roman Near East and parts of Egypt as well. After this, the oasis gradually became deserted and forgotten. For centuries, the ruins of Palmyra lay undisturbed in the desert. Only a few European travelers reached the city as it slowly recovered. The Englishman Robert Wood visited the city in 1751 and brought an impressive collection of works of art back to Europe. Archaeological exploration of the site started later, after the First World War. The first ruin to be excavated was the Babylonian Temple of Baal. This unique temple is one of the most important religious buildings of the first century AD. It was originally a Greek temple, which only fragments survived. The central shrine, or cella, was built first, followed by a large double colonnaded portico in Corinthian style in the second century AD. Allegedly, 1,500 columns surrounded the temple, but today, only a tenth of these still stand. According to an ancient inscription from 44 AD, the Temple of Baal was where sacrifice was offered to the Great Trinity. In the Great Trinity, the supreme deity was Baal, while Yarhibol symbolized the sun, and Uglibol symbolized the moon. The stone paved road in the middle was 35 feet wide, and the two lateral, once covered pathways were each 20 foot wide. This long street was lined with Corinthian columns on which stood bronze statues of prominent citizens, gods, and military leaders. Here, traders sold special goods imported by caravans. The Cardo was lined with imposing buildings, which even in their ruined state, give us an idea of their ancient splendor. Still astonishing visitors, Palmyra is another enigmatic relic of an age whose self-confidence we can scarcely imagine. The Roman dream, persisting over a thousand years, saw itself as both the first and last world civilization. Even the imitators of Rome built everything they built to last forever. <laughs>